Hello, hello. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Oh, well, wait a minute. Hello, one viewer. Hello. Um, yeah. I'm gonna be there in a in a second. <laughs> okay, hello one viewer. I will now disable the viewer account. Oh god, I feel weird. Um yeah. Hello, or Fiena, if that's like your, why do you go? What do you mean, why do you go? Um, I'm not going, I just started. <laughs> um, hey, my cat is lying on my lap, and um, or what do you mean? Um, my cat is sitting on my lap. He's getting petted, but he's also... Uh, he also tries to bite me a little bit. Um, yeah. So streaming, f like right now, this situation is a little bit weird. Um, and yeah, I have a cat. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, um, uh, show him to the camera right now because he's like, he's sitting so, um, 
so comfortably on my lap and i know that when i like lift him up to the camera he won't he won't sit down on my lap again if he tries to stand up i can i can catch him and give you a short glimpse of him um his name is eddie um yeah okay he wants to ah here he is here he is and he tries to yeah um This is weird, um, because I had a difficult situation with my parents just an hour ago or something. Um, something I, because my, uh, the simple thing is like, okay, my dad is like a few rooms away and um, he can probably not hear me, but there's still this, okay, oh, like my, mo my mom visited us, um, over over uh, Christmas, and um, now she's um, uh, she already went back home. She's she she lives in Hamburg. I live in a sh small shithole town here, and um, <sighs> the thing is simply like I can. Um, I think the best way to talk about this is doing it during the day. Oh, you live in Hamburg too. Hi. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, I visit my mom from time to time in Hamburg, um, but yeah, um, there's still this, so my dad can probably not hear me, especially as I have a new microphone, <laughs> like, got it for, for Christmas. I just started uh, streaming around a month ago, a month and a half, that's me, <laughs> to be honest, like, if it would be just... Like um, I'm 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 a person that's like very down to simply say okay hey let's just meet up somewhere as long as it like as it is like in public like nothing happens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro, you don't know. If you would live where I live, you would know the definition of shithole. <laughs> um. And, um, but so, so like the thing is, of course, I, like I, I'm, I'm like, com but I also com completely understand when like people, for example, if you n get to know people from like online dating or stuff and you meet up like very quickly, um, or I understand that people don't want to like immediately meet up, even if it is in public or something like that. I can completely understand that, but yeah. Mm. Like the thing is, I don't have to speak that loud again uh, anymore, and I can also like lean back because my new microphone um, records everything in a fine way, n different than the last one. Um, but yeah, it's still this. Okay, my father's in the flat, um, and just because we just had the conflict, like nothing's like okay, yeah, like. Um, the relation is quite not that nice and dandy right now. Um, and I know the thing, like, my, okay, my father understands English, but he would probably simply under hear, if he would hear me, he would probably just hear that I'm speaking into the microphone and not really could, like, comprehend what it is that I'm saying. Um, but it's still a weird feeling. I think you couldn't probably understand that. Um, so I'm thinking about talking but the thing is that what i want to talk about i have like actually so much to do it's like actually something i'm sorry that i only can make like this pre these preliminary comments um because of course if i would tell you what it is and you could actually understand why i make these that's that's the fucking thing that people are annoyed probably when you make prelimin preliminary comments about what you're going to say and you can only justify and they can only understand why you are making these preliminary comments after you actually set the thing you made the preliminary comments for um so and because if you then just break up delivering these comments and then they understand then you get to the point then they understand oh oh yeah it would have been good if you made these preliminary comments on that <laughs> and um 
<laughs> so yeah, that's the that's the odd, um, an odd, like conversational pattern that I have, and um, that I need to learn to deal with more. For example, in interpersonal conversation, but like in interpersonal conversations, because like really, really annoying for other persons if you like completely break up your sentence in one part and jump to the other sen sentence and yeah but also yeah twitch streaming is like also so the thing is what i want to talk about fits actually very very good the type of stuff i want to talk about because it's very much it's something that's like directly from my life something that impacts me very much um that is at the same time an experience that i think is incredibly relatable um but also something that has in my personal situation how i like the entire circumstances and how i experienced it and so on the entire background has very very much to do with like philosophy and politics and what i feel and think about that and um how that is like connected and so it's actually like a perfect thing to talk about um except that um okay no i can talk about it. no yeah like talking about the entire thing is not not bad like it's not because i did something that like then got misunderstood or was like in very inconsiderate um and um that led to like what the thing is that's the thing when i just start talking about that then i have to go like all in that's that's the thing and that's always the fucking thing which what i just said with okay i'm making these preliminary comments all the time people are like ah oh, come on get to the point and then when i start talking about what i actually want to talk about only then you can actually understand why yeah um no i need to i need to take more time for that um like i don't really feel comfortable with that right now maybe tomorrow during the day during the day when my father isn't here and i'm alone and yeah i feel i think i feel more comfortable with that um yeah um tell us more about your hometown um yeah oh that's also something like um something that i actually like right now in also in light of the of the thing that led to the conflict um thought about it like okay private information and um like of course i'm a fucking nobody so you can always say yeah you're nobody you're irrelevant it doesn't even matter if anybody whatsoever like gets this or that information from you and that's probably true <laughs> but then there are these small instances when um it actually gets dangerous and yeah so i live in i live in okay what i can say i live in germany and because if i tell you the name of my hometown and one can very easily like find out my real name and um uh then this real name is probably only once in this town and then you would have my address and that's how like of course no fucking psycho would make that for two viewer andy i'm not a two viewer i'm actually a one viewer andy or well, most of the time <laughs> um Oh, right now Twitch Twitch view card tells me even three. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, I live in I live in a very shitty like I'm maybe in general like I'm 23. Um going to be 24 pretty soon. Um I want to know. <laughs> no, I don't think I I don't think it's just something that just when just recently happened something happened to you and then you get extra that's like in some kind of, especially when it is about, you're looking like an Eric or Simon. <laughs> the fucking thing is my name is Eric. <laughs> and actually even, even like spelled with a C also. <laughs> but, um, and things like I'm, I'm German. I was born in Germany. And so I, but that's like, like the English or American version of Eric. And not like because like the German version would be like with a K or Philip. Oh, the th the, the thing is like my mm, my ex best friend, my ex best friend's name was Philip. Mm. 
and um yeah um so just when recently something happened to you you like get more comfortable um not comfortable um cautious with some stuff and yeah um maybe i can tell a funny story like until this day okay my, my cat wants to go out there i have to open the door <laughs> i'm sorry i'm but So, yeah, I can... Um, hello, Mr. Like Today. <laughs> Something that I really, really recognized in the past days. Like, I haven't really... I streamed, like, two days? Like, on the first? Like, I don't know. Like, during the, during the holiday days now, what I recognize, and I haven't streamed that much, is that, oh, wow, people seem to, like... I got a lot of followers, like, in, like, the the ratio to okay like right now right now i already got like two new followers and i haven't even been streaming 20 minutes <laughs> and like normally it's a good day when i get like one follower per per stream because like the people like clicking through twitch like low view count just chatting streamers and stuff and i have like the only follower stream uh, chat enabled so i got follower and people want to chat and so on so yeah um so i can tell you a funny story um that has like slightly traumatized me to this day. Um, and it's so after after like graduating from high school, like immediate like immediately after like the next month or the next two months uh two months after. So I was on my first holiday with friends, like not with family but with friends. And we went to Bulgaria. Um, I don't know how you call the, what you call the, um, region of Bulgaria we went to in English, but it was like a party area, like actually like, okay, a pure party area. And, um, I'm not even that much of a party guy. Like I, I do really like partying, but I didn't go that much into clubs, but yeah. Um, and <laughs> the last day we were there. Like we, like really last evening, um, last night, we drank a little bit, um, we went outside, um, wanted to go like, wanted to um, like go along the beach again, like one last time to say like goodbye and stuff. And um, I needed to pee and um, my little, do you dance? I, I danced a little bit. I didn't... Um, like, yeah, I really like dancing, actually. I don't do it as much as I did. Um, um, but yeah, so I needed to pee. And with my little drunk head, I just... Oh, yeah, like, I just went for, like, one... I don't know what you call it. Like, something which wasn't directly on the, str on the street where you would go. But, like behind a bush or something like yeah and did pee there and but which was actually like in public and okay and then while i was still peeing <laughs> someone with a, with a bright fresh flashlight then so someone tips on my shoulder and with a bright flashlight shines me uh in my eyes and um turns out um that's the security guy um i was peeing on hotel property I was in trouble and my friends I said my friends oh yeah you can already go go I will I will join you later like I was like only like for two minutes or something and hello Mr. <laughs> like today I'm talking about how, how I was like slightly traumatized by my public peeing story in Bulgaria and mm, so yeah uh, me drunk nervous as fuck also, like, I was 18 there. Like, right now I speak very good English. But there, like, I could speak English. But I was fucking nervous. I was drunk. And like, oh my god, oh my god. And then these guys, and they were, there were two, two security guys. Um, said, like, okay. Um, either you have to pay us, like, 50, whatever the um, currency was um, in Bulgaria. Or you will, um, you will come with us to the police, and you will uh, spend the night in a cell. 
and I was like, bro, what the fuck? Like, I was like, okay, okay. I have the money, but I have it in my hotel room. I can get it. I can get you, uh, the money from my hotel room. And uh, <laughs> I pretty much think I'm, I'm like just thinking about it. Like, I pretty much think that like the $50 thing was just just a scam. Like, yeah, from like, like scam tourists and stuff. And like, but I cannot spend a night in the, in, in, in the police. We need to go. We need to leave tomorrow. We have to catch our flight. And I, I try to I try to explain to them and like no no you're come you're coming with us to the police and then I fucking I literally screamed for my friends. I literally screamed that my friends would hear me and then they would finally join me and I would oh my god, I was at least like because I was also quite afraid because I was completely alone and was like, Okay, what what are they what are they gonna do with this? Um no, the thing is, like, I I told them because I was just peeing. Like, no, like I, I was just peeing, and I told them, yeah, you can you can already go. I I will join you, and so they they didn't knew whatsoever what was going on, and um, but because they weren't, uh, it wasn't a long time. I, I I, my God, I'm very fucking um, glad that they heard me, and then they joined me. We had like conversation. I don't know what happened then. We got into an argument or something, and then like the one of the security guys like lo lost his patience, and I think one of those guys like I don't know if it was the main guy or the second guy. He gave me a slap on the head, like with the with the bare hand like this, and I was like for, for a moment like completely shocked like what the fuck, like did this guy just hit me and. Then I was like, I was like, complete, like, okay, I was not freaking out, but like, bro, what the fuck? This was fucking violence. That isn't, that isn't okay. And and, but this was actually my like, release because then you you also started to see, okay, that because we said that and because got, like obviously this wasn't legit. Um, one of the security guys like, yeah, pff, pff, screw you, and then we could leave. And, but like, holy fucking shit. Like and I was I was a nervous wreck the entire like the rest of the the rest of the night, and um, <laughs> like it's like, you know when you have a shock, and it like it sits in your bones, like and you feel that uh, hours after that, and you cannot like, normally sense things around you, and um, yeah because of that. I'm still quite nervous to this day when I pee in public, even if it's like completely dark in the bushes and whatsoever. That's still something like, like the little mini trauma that's like dug into your brain and like, what if someone catches you and it's the police or something and like that? And yeah, um, yeah, that's my story of public peeing trauma in Bulgaria. <laughs> yeah. But like the um uh in general like the the holiday in Bulgaria was pretty cool. Like I there was most stories of you and your friends place. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, uh did you ever peed somewhere else special? I peed directly on the on the uh like okay directly on the wall of a of a church. Maybe. Uh, oh, go oh, go oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I have another one. I have another one. I have another one. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 like, if you think that was you, then you, you can get, you can. Oh, God. Okay. Okay, get ready. Um, <laughs> I was uh, like, in general, like, okay, I need to, I need to remark before that that this is missing a lot of general context of my life situation. I felt and like general frustration with my living situation, with my friend group at the time, and yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think it was on Halloween. Or on a on a I think it was on a on a birthday or I don't know so um it 
two friends, um, like a couple who lived together, invited me, and I was like the, um, um, yeah, party. And and on those on the parties of them, we all like everybody got like extremely drunk, like every time, extremely drunk. And I was like so fed up with like very fed up with my friend group at that time. Um, in general, just to cut it short, it was simply just life expectancies, um, and uh, like life expectations. Like, okay, oh, you see that these people <laughs> see that a lot of these people, um, they have like basically accepted that they will never really leave that this town. They are born here and they will die here and they will live here. And I, th I thought, okay, no, that and they think like that when you talk about your dreams and you want something more and stuff and they think that's like you are arrogant and you are like you would like oh you're not aren't we good enough for you and stuff like and like you get treated like that basically like maybe not in that they say it to your face but like through indirect communication basically and so i was drunk as hell and i was on the toilet and They had like this liquid soap dispenser. And yeah, it was like, <sighs> yeah, oh. <laughs> and I was like, it was like, <laughs> did not. I fucking did. I fucking did. And uh <laughs> I just thought it was like fun like that's why I made all these remarks and all this all this okay, what was the circumstance? I was so first and of course you cannot really understand because that was just very shortcut and you are not me in that kind of situation and it's probably like it isn't it wasn't justified at all it was it still was like pretty disgusting but if someone did it in my place i would just and it's also like the general like code of how do you deal with um with your friends it was just something that is so fucked up but also that's like incredibly funny and um the thing is, about it, if I did apologize, um, that all that already sounds like okay. What would normal humans do? What would like in a normal relation do? Um, I did neither of that of those two things. Um, they basically indirectly contacted me through another friend of ours um, and talked to him and. Um, as like if I it is the funny thing that is that this has like some kind of parallels to what I'm living through or what I lived through an hour ago with my parents. They basically contacted me through another friend of ours and he told me that they were like, Okay, did you do that? And first of all I, I was going for oh I had a blackout, I don't know what the fuck ever I did and basically in the end it was like no denying that and then I apologized and yeah. Um, but yeah, um, the thing is like the, the relations, like my, my, all my friendships here, like basically wore down over the last few years. Um, that's basically okay. Like, um, I wouldn't do that in a, in a like good and functioning friendship where I wasn't frustrated. And also I, I still think it was like funny as fuck. Like, I still think that's funny as fuck. Um, like, I have a very disgusting sense of humor. Um, no, I don't, I don't. Um, it's also, like, that's the weird thing about, um, <laughs> that's what I want to say, um, that's the weird, like, that was, like, oh, two years ago, I think? Yeah, the summer of, two, the summer of 2018, I think, was that. And, um, like we, those are the people who are like in my age, who live in my town, 
but there's very few people of my age in my town. And it's very weird if my Sima if I see my like have been friends in like the supermarket or on the street or something and normally normally avoid that because it was like always it was never like a clear cut okay goodbye or big conflict it was just something that wore out and something that i i was also invited over sometimes but i know that like okay no if i don't if i go there i don't feel that it will not feel good i will just be frustrated again and think okay why did i try why did i try i don't feel comfortable here i don't want to hang out with these people um and this is not what friendship should be about. And um, but okay, it's not like you have a friendship contract and then you say, "Oh, our friendship," I de I decline our friendship contract, um, or stuff like that. Uh, you, <laughs> that's the weird thing with like people you once were friends with and you don't really know how to approach that if they see you and you see them and blah and shit and yeah. Um, but also, I have very. Like in the past, it was even more like more extreme. But um, I have a pretty pretty um, um, disgusting sense of humor. Um, now nah, the, the thing with about just tell them the thing is like it has been like one year or something. Like everybody knows, everybody knows. And also the thing is like the condition, the condition for being able to tell somebody your reasons why you you are in conflict with them for example or the relationship of you and them is not going at like the condition is that they understand you that they can actually understand your situation and your reasoning and if the very problem of the relation is that they cannot understand you that they aren't that you aren't able to have an, uh, a normal conversation with them that they treat you seriously and stuff then you don't have to tell them anything like it wouldn't make sense to try to tell them why like it was it was just be it would just be like a very formal thing where they would like yeah okay i can understand hmm now that we have some distance i can see hmm and stuff like that but that would be just that would even hurt more because it, it would just seem like this, it would just seem be like something like, for like a play of like, okay, yeah, you play this role, you play that role. Um, at least then it's like something that's like, if there's something that cannot be spoken about or, or something, then there's still, we have like this kind of weird, you once had a connection. And if you're like in this play kind of mode, then even this connection is lost. And I would feel... Um, no, no, mm -mm, no. Like, I would, like, say, hey, thank you, but I don't have anything to, do. I have something to do and stuff, and yeah. Um. No, there, there are still people who, uh, like, uh, but... Like I have moved to a different friend friend group, and um, that like basically has been like kind of like an um, a behavioral pattern or pattern in friendships of mine that I basically find a friend like since I think I think since like what's the since okay we have a different school system here in Germany than um in um in the US um basically like your first to fourth grade is like elementary school like in in the US as far as i know but then you basically have the um the adv your advanced school basically and that's like that's the only school you're going to go until you graduate like that's your high school but your high school is basically also middle school basically like that um and um like since since the fifth grade, um, I basically had this pattern of okay, I'm gonna find a friend group and then for a few years stick to them. I feel good there, and then I kind of like grow out of them. We go our different ways. We be, we develop in different ways. Then there's like this weird transitionary phase where it's like okay, we don't really feel comfortable. Everything feels like kind of out of place, and um, 
either I feel lonely or I find new friends and then I get another friend group and that's like always like from like three to five years basically I have been in those friend groups and that has been like my and like yes uh, last year I got to know the last friend group like it, it, it also isn't like a like the other were like pretty cohesive friend groups like they were pretty tight knit networks and um those I'm like the one I'm in today is more like very loose like there's okay these people know each other um but also like not as not as tight as, as for example high school and yeah um there has been a phase in that was very very interesting um in 2013 yeah 2013 i was 15 at the time 15 16 um that was basically after my first big falling in love like my first big one and until this day i would say okay the only one really the only time i was like really big in love like with 15 <laughs> <laughs> um like that was such a turning point for me in my life um like that was i think 10th grade end of 10th grade or so i uh, know middle middle of 10th grade and um that was just when i was developing in such a way that i grew out of my old friend group i started skateboarding two years ago and that was like when it really hit me okay wow okay what does this do to me? what would you tell your old friends if they would watch you now <laughs> this is something i'm also quite of like i don't know sometimes scared a little bit um because then it's not this okay anonymous stuff um you feel more watched because these people know that old picture of you and um um i think then okay i would feel more limited in okay what can i say blah 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 um and that's uh, that's exactly what i want to get out of and um so i just stopped thinking about that I just thought, okay, hey, no, no, don't, don't think about that. Um, that's, yeah. Like it would be just some, some tie to my old life um, that I actually want to get rid of i think then i like okay no i don't want to be constrained by all that stuff anymore um yeah it's like okay you some problems you simply can't fix you can't do anything about that um so yeah um basically like yeah i, I ignore or I, yeah, also like the same, the, the same thought with like, okay, it's, it's much more, much more, um, what to call that, uh, it's, it's somehow different, but just with the thought of, okay, just imagine your parents would watch this and, um, there just is some stuff that you cannot explain, but also that doesn't mean like, I mean, maybe think about it like that a little bit, like knowing that like your old friends would watch you feels a little bit like of a surveillance state, basically. Um, yeah. Yeah, a little bit like that it would feel, I think. Um, yeah now to come back to my um to my old where i went like um 2030 uh 13 13 yes 13 um like major turning turning point in my life 
and um, I had completely like lost my old, or like I had really just cut off ties with my old friend group at that time, um, and uh, also the thing <laughs> with the girl I was in love was completely, completely gone. Like it was, oh God, it was completely, complete crash, complete car crash. Um, and I stood there then alone completely. And um, yeah, that was like, that was like one of the times where, okay, um, I basically had nobody and um, which wasn't like this weird transitionary phase. Um, but I got to know someone um, very quickly, very quickly, still to this day, one of my best friendships I ever had. Um, and, um, Ah, that ended ugly. That ended really ugly. Um, like I was best, basically, like really best friends with her for I think what's the fucking word for that? Let me just look something up. Oh, three quarter, okay, yeah, three quarter or three fourth, fourths, okay, yeah, um, basically like three quarter of a year, and um, I think maybe maybe just in general, I think um. Like relations, relationships, not like not, or like friendships, relationships, whatever, breaking down is a difficult and messy thing because you would like to end, you would like it to end in a way that's, um, okay, like, what to. Okay, I got something right now. Um, <laughs> oh, what did I want to say? Yeah, breaking breaking down friendships and relationships, whatever, is a difficult thing. Because you know you had a good time with this person or with these people in general, and um, <laughs> thank you. Um, so you would rather be it like a clean, like something like okay, you go your own ways, like in a in a good manner and stuff. Um, and everything's cool, so you respect, like, so the thing is, like, when something breaks down, obviously, the thing is that, retrospectively, sometimes it gets, like, okay, it, um, <sighs> colors everything retrospectively in a bad light, but of course, that's just an, an illusion, and, uh, but still, something that's, like, emotionally pretty real. Um... But it's like really this this messy thing where it's like okay the condition like the conditions that led you down the road of okay the breakdown of this made it basically impossible to have like this okay yeah we have a nice conversation in the end we understand each other um, and stuff and yeah because that's the thing you don't understand each other anymore um, that's the entire problem that's why you don't cannot have this conversation. Um, 
And because if you could have this conversation, everything would be cool. Then there would be no reason to end the friendship. Like that's basically the dilemma you're in in the end. And um, yeah, like it's a kind of it. It's probably if you look at it from like a philosophical level, like an antinomy. Um, like yeah, that's like okay. Everything leads you in a in a dead end. You don't know where to go, and yeah, that's the messiness of it. Um, yeah. And it's also. Mm, like that's maybe the thing of feeling bound with okay feeling bound like exactly with the question of okay what would you say if your old friends would watch you today um it's pretty it's a little bit like with parents like okay oh what do my parents think like these people that like you, know, you still like you once had a deep connection to them like okay with parents of, of course it's it's different but um maybe with like past relationships and the romantic sexual sense it's, it's a bit more um I mean, I think they are quite, quite similar. I think there's probably more, there can be probably more resentment in the, um, like in the romantic sexual thing, because there can be like a huge, a huge, yeah, just hurting each other. Because the intimacy is much more close. Like, okay, you also have intimacy, like, in, in friendships, of course. And they can be, like, betrayal and stuff and all like that. Um, but... Yeah. The feeling that you're okay... That you, like, owe people something. Um... I think that can actually drive you crazy, like in a certain way. Um, this feeling that you owe people or someone something that can really fucking drives you crazy because then that's like some kind of like condition in your head that, that, that like that like a protocol that runs through your head before every fucking decision. Um, like oh okay what was that per this person like maybe would say about this or think about this probably not like consciously but like this it's always running in the background that thing and um like we have that with societal expectations most of the times most of the time and there's the same thing with like okay you it's actually like the fucking same structure with like okay hey the thing the feeling that you owe somebody something you owe somebody something a justification or you should be or behave like this and that and then you see people that don't conform to this and if you believed your entire time that like okay oh you you really have to um you really have to um conform to you really owe this like in terms of that's literally like from the psychoanalyst Jack Lacan, there is this notion of the big other, which is pretty fitting here. Like society then would be like the big other who actually like that isn't an actual person, but it's just like um like God would be a big other. Uh, it's like this one entity thing or this vague um like people is, is a good example like that's not what people do or that's not what one does like in german we have a really good ex explanation for that um um um
Uh, what did I want to say? Oh god. Um. Yeah, the in German the the, the, the word for this is Mann. <laughs> which isn't which also means man but in this man it means like more like you don't do that or one doesn't do that and um um yeah and this if you have that in your head all the time and then you see people who are whose behavior isn't like filtered through that um then you are like then like at least that's my reaction. You resent these people. You're like, how are they able to do this? Like why can't I do that? And and you that turns like into resentment into the form of okay, um, at least that's the case for me <laughs> or was a lot of times and still is like like why aren't they accountable to these things I believe in or whatever and like they can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> like that's that's what I why well, that's what I talked about with okay what fascinates me so much about twitch streamers and um yeah um i want that i, I want to get rid of that resentment like that's also something when you live in a small town it's just something completely different than um in a big city like it's something uh, yeah, a lot of times it's like actually like okay, you cannot call it life that happens here in small towns. It's like it's like actually like a crime against people's lives to be born here and live here, and yeah, like and um, that this entire idea of okay, you have this. It's very specific, like it's something, and that's why I I um I express myself so um in, like <laughs> I mean this this phenomenon of okay. Um, you think things through too much so that you, basically your thinking, your over-analysis basically stands in your own way. Um, I mean, of course, that's... Um, yeah. Damn, you look angry. I do look angry? I don't think I look angry. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Hello, Revival, dude, OG. Um, yeah, the thing is, like, maybe simply with, okay, sometimes people simply want to hang out. Um, the, the thing is simply, okay, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to hang out with people when, like, okay, the only condition you can hang out with them is when you get drunk or something. And um, when you, like... You basically, not, basically, the feeling I I, I want to describe is this: that okay, um, when you know you can't hang around, like when you hang around with a group of friends, you have a certain trust to them. You know everything's gonna be cool. Like you can like flow. Like everything can flow. You you can like let loose, and um, in. And I lost that feeling like a few years ago with that friend group. It was always like, okay, hey, like I felt too much responsibility and like, okay, what's what's if that person says something extremely hugely dumb, like homophobic or racist or anything. And like, that's just something. And not only in the sense of, okay, I feel like I have the moral obligation to confront that or something, like not even which would be like formally correct, but also just in the sense of, okay, I don't feel comfortable around these people. That's simply the thing. I don't want to have to feel that somebody says something like that in my in my environment when I'm drunk and I just want to have fun. Um, and that's something that extremely alienate, uh, alienates you from uh, from people. And 
also you you want to hang out with people that can surprise you in a positive way that can like that inspire you and um if it, it feels like all the time like in general in this entire town it's like everything it feels like everything is like it is like as if gravity is like five times higher here like you have to fight your way to get out of this and like and the thing is if your friend group is part of that gravity that's fucked up if you have to fight against even in the moments you think you can chill even in the moments where you think yeah let's just get wasted and have a good evening and stuff um even then they still they are part of this overall gravity of death in this town um like very slow death simply um that's nothing enjoyable that's nothing where you say like okay hey yeah cool let's still be friends like no that doesn't work anymore um and i'm very happy that i found people who who are not like this who like um last year was really really cool in that regard where i really um like these people live mostly around like Cologne and Düsseldorf and um like I I visited these cities like multiple like every, like almost every month in the summer or sometimes even multiple times a month and um um then like you you get a small glimpse like it's like small boy in big city basically and sometimes you get a small glimpse of this oh, this is what life can be like it's like I haven't even started living yet, and that's like something that's so amazing, and something that like, like it's like reverse gravity, something that lets you fly a little bit. Everything feels a little bit lighter, and you don't feel like you have to fight against everything around you. Um, and um, but the thing is, okay, with Corona, like I had like one time this year where I went to Cologne. Um, oh no, two times, two times. Um. But it only really feels like one time because only one time I had like this entire like a, a significant part of this friend group around me, and the other time was because of a girl from that friend group, um, with whom getting to know, which I still didn't really <laughs> tell you all, um, um. I still didn't really tell you all, and I still haven't like consciously reflected upon that. Ugh. Yeah, basically, which also like went to, like didn't really work out, um, and with like the not really working out was part of the reason why I started streaming, <laughs> because I wanted was like one way of dealing with that or the feeling that I thought okay hey if I reflect on that like life maybe people have like similar problems than me maybe people can learn from that um obviously that's like hugely dumb if you don't have like a significant following um but also also of course then the problem is okay maybe there's there's just some stuff where I think I, su I still think about the internet and social media way too simplistic. Like, um, I think about it in categories, actually. There's just like a, a kind of like sickness or something which I like inherited from philosophy, which like you, you think of, and just think about like, or maybe just non-empirical sciences. Yeah, if you want to call philosophy a science, like humanities, like you think about things in like categories and concepts and um, not really like, okay, oh, there may be internal differences of how things are handled. There may be internal contingencies, like no, everything works either this way or that way, like a hugely oversimplified um, way of thinking about social media and stuff and you 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 see all that stuff you see all that all that stuff I mean like he 
good example. Okay, it's, it's a stupid example, but it's like a good example that everybody knows and everybody knows the most of is Trump. Um, but basically, okay. Um, that's a good example of like, okay, he can't keep getting away with it. Like, um, where it seems like, okay, the old rules, according to which the game of politics was played, or the game of media commentary or stuff, like, have been like completely overthrown overnight, basically. And um, now the th thing is basically, okay, if you, if you dream about something, oh no, let's go back to like the, um, um, the old normal days where things still, where truth still mattered or something. It's like, okay, no, you didn't really get that the rules of the game changed. And you have to embrace that and have to deal with that new game. Um, so, so that, okay, the, and now like um, applied to Twitch and okay, talking about your own life, um, the question of um, privacy of, okay, how much do you disclose? Um, on social media, it feels like you can basically say like fucking everything. You can like this this old where you were like sound of kind of sounding your own managerial subject of oh what do I disclose? What can I disclose? Where you have to have to be like ca cautious or stuff seems to be like completely dismantled. I think at least that was my my perception of it. Um, and still is like that's still something that I believe, although I just said, okay, yeah, it's probably wrong, but it's something like some kind of assumptions that are just deep down unconsciously that um have integrated themselves into your mental infrastructure, and um that what should i say? what can I say um Yeah, but that, okay, obviously it's much more complicated than like, okay, hey, no disclosing this or that can actually be, have like, under these and that conditions can actually have like fucked up, so, fucked up consequences. And you don't, certainly don't want to deal with that consequences. Um, that's probably just something that isn't really like publicized in the media normally. Um, like that, it's like your own selection. It's basically probably like selection bias. If, if that is selection, is that selection bias? I don't know. Like, um, if well, maybe maybe what I mean, maybe what I mean, um, when I say selection bias, I don't know if that's the adequate word. What I mean is basically a friend of mine explained it to me, um, with okay, like during the Second World War, the British um examined the um planes that came back and examined okay where did they had like the most um holes from bullets and then they like reinforced the plating on these on in these areas of the planes but because they thought oh this would be like the these were like the most critical areas these were like okay oh they're most shoot, shoot therefore we need to protect them more um but that that doesn't make any sense because those planes that would need it would need it reinforcement in their coding they never came back they they had critical hits so you only examine those who already made it that's basically and i that's what i make that's what i mean like okay this is always the thing with like okay celebrities and internet celebrities that like you see like a all the time who gets the media present who is like the the show off person of that um it's always um the people who made it and then that is your, that becomes your like general image of a streamer or something like that and um although we, we know of course like rationally okay no it's like a tiny minority and they stress it all the time and stuff like it still gets ingrained in our brains and that's like the same principle that applies here. And that's probably okay, yeah, you those cases that are so media present and stuff um are like um are 
like also like this kind of what I call the selection bias. Maybe it's the right thing I describe. I only heard the word selection bias and I think it puts, puts, fits pretty well what I'm trying to describe. I have no idea if it fits the adequate word for that. Yeah. No. I just need to have a short break from non-stop talking. I think I need to let in some fresh air also. Yeah, I seriously need to let in some fresh air. My head is giving me quite some trouble. Good thing, which is which quite, quite is quite neatly fits into, um, what I've been talking about the relationship to my old friend groups and stuff, and also fits into the relationship with my parents. But actually, in general, um, when it comes to, oh, and it fits so good and everything, <laughs> like. 
what would be amazing if I could have some kind of brainstorm about Snowpiercer, actually. Uh, the film, not the series. I think the series is actually quite done well and actually has some interesting aspects that the film doesn't have. For example, the built-in social order, let's just say, and hierarchy, um, or social constellation. And yeah, social constellation is more abstract, hierarchy also, like, okay, stresses the point that these are unequal social relations um, um, in infrastructure. Like in Snowpiercer, the series, there is actually, okay, yeah, um, that the captain, like, not captain, but yeah, basically cap captain. You could probably say, I don't know, train driver <laughs> who um, I was actually driving the train and controlling the train had like good moral intentions and tried to make the best for everybody, the best, try to get out the best life for everybody um, on the train. But that like the way the train worked, the train, the way the train um, used its resources to keep the people alive in there and stuff. There was like a built-in hierarchy in there. You couldn't just say, okay, no, we don't do that anymore. Um, so yeah, like that there is a resistance to social change in in build materials in infrastructure and something. Like that's an, that's something that doesn't really get addressed into in in the film. But otherwise I think the film actually basically has like all all important basically the film is like a vector by Bonjon Ho if I pronounce his name correctly, I don't know. Um, the film basically is like a core for everything that's important when it comes to thinking about like society politics and stuff like everything even even when it comes about okay how to think about these things um like a good example is actually like okay um Oh yeah, yeah. What did I want? What did I what, did I, what I want to talk about is um arrogance, arrogance, and what appears as arrogant, mm, which like it fits. It seems pretty detached, but it fits completely well into the framework of and problematic of Snowpiercer. Um, Maybe the thing is, um, to give you an, like a starting point, um, that I'm someone who is like, who gets incredibly fucking angry about, um, 
about arrogance, but also gets very frustrated when he's getting called arrogant. This is basically my situation. Um, the thing is simply that, okay, yeah, there can be arrogance in the sense, and okay, like there can be actual arrogance in the sense that, okay, what a person, like, that's, that's like, okay, you, you're watching down on others in a way, like, in a way that's okay, um, and maybe first of all that, like, you can watch down on others, there's nothing wrong with that, some people are just very shitty, um, and do incredibly shitty things, um, and to say, to say, oh, these people have, but, like, okay, oh, they have their, like, dignity, and it's, like, oh, this metaphysical human core and shit like that, and actually they are got people and stuff like that, no, they are not, um, like, um, People get made by their circumstances. There isn't anything that's like particular inherent to a person. Um, change the circumstances and you change the person. It's as easy as that. Um, um, what can I say? What do I want to say? Um, Maybe like this. Maybe 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 to put it like this, that arrogance can be like actual being arrogant, like objectively arrogant to call it like that. Maybe which isn't just a subjective feeling. Um, is okay. You use like, or maybe to put it like that. Simply it reinforces a social hierarchical order where the person that's arrogant is above and the other are under them and. They think, actually, what I just said with, okay, hey, oh, people don't have, like, any, oh, metaphysical core, they're actually all human beings, could be, like, in, in some, con under certain circumstances, that could actually be arrogant, yes, that's true, um, but it doesn't need to be under any circumstances, that's a difference, it's either, okay, you don't have to look at the circumstances, or you have to, that's an important difference there, that's something like in... Theoretic and endeavor, this is like completely overlooked way too often. Um, but the thing can also be that, okay, oh, um, people call you arrogant because you are actually attacking their social order. And what they basically, like, um, I don't want to make this too individualistic, like in the sense of, oh, okay, these people are dragging you down, and you, as the chosen individual of those lower people, rise above them. Like, no, none of that shit, no. Um, um, <sighs> how to put it? This is also some of the things that I came up with are, like, quite of, oh... <sighs> Difficult, I think. That was one of the difficulties I um encountered um like the last times of streaming that I felt like I needed to be like this take machine that's like okay, um Yeah, this take machine that delivers like prepackaged takes and positions and reasonings and stuff. Um especially for those who aren't already like in contact and active like in politics and in um, philosophy or just in thinking about these things, not even like in, in action. Um, um, yeah, so um, I think that then these people like... Um, I think they could misunderstand when I'm just elaborating the thought that I momentarily have, which doesn't need to be a position I actually have, um, but where it's just, okay, I'm going through pros, cons, pros, cons, and questions, unclarities, 
stuff where I'm undecided on, um, and that this is a complexity that you only that you like only really know I think if you're already acquainted with that thinking about these things like the bonus of K also like in left tube and stuff this is like all hyper personalized and it's actually the entire diff the entire opposite of what we need um um I'm like okay no it fucking doesn't matter if this person has beef with that person or if that person holds this position and that person holds that position like it well, it doesn't I already talked about that that doesn't matter it matters what are the positions and which is the correct one and um only in only with this degree of depersonalization you're actually able to learn anything um otherwise it's just celebrities otherwise it's just that like you can't learn anything like theoretically from on a theoretical level from celebrities <laughs> Um, and yeah so what I wanted to say is that I feel like okay um oh give me a, yeah okay no this wouldn't work I just thought maybe in my in my new microphone because you see okay you can't barely see um like i have the cable on top of on on top of it and i i actually use use some cable what do you cable fixer cable stabilizers whatever um um to to fixate them on the on the microphone arm and i just thought okay well that the microphone arm um itself is actually hollow and that on the microphone arm of my of my lamp there it goes like that that the cable is inside the hollow microphone arm but that doesn't work the big chunky thing on the cable that goes into the microphone um i do have the uncanny feeling that like half of my chat that was I was active half an hour ago was like old friends of mine <laughs> that's an uncanny feeling And the thing is, even I don't want to know. Like, I don't even want to know. That wasn't a particularly pre pleasant stream, to be honest. Like, didn't let, didn't, 
leave me with a really like good impact. Maybe maybe a thing is something um no, I don't know. Maybe a thing about the okay also some of the stuff that I um it goes into my okay why do I what do I want to stream why do I stream how do I want to stream is that I feel okay I made the particular bad the particularly bad job in talking to my old friends in a way that like would have maybe been somehow understanding of certain feelings impetuses general I don't have a right word for that. Um, tendencies of theirs, and be able to, like offer them a way to deal with that, or frustrations maybe, offer them a deal with um to how to deal with that, or like suggest them a deal with that that can be that isn't like moralistic and that goes into the left direction. Um, like what I what I was talking about with and like a few streams ago also like an an anti-modernist resentment or something that okay yeah you can put up certain basically the problem of freedom and felt freedom when do you feel free um and that we with freedom we we have very strong associations of particular stuff um which are in general actually if we like critically examine them pretty anti-modernist um but that you don't have to go down the anti-modernist route and that the problem was that that was like in an extreme like that was completely in a time also on the internet where there wasn't any like anything like that like we have on the left like made a really good job on not being such <sighs> like being edgy again basically having humor again mm. like of course not everybody is we still have the fucking woke skulls and stuff but we have made a huge improvement there i think a huge improvement over the last two years um and this is something i'm very fucking grateful for like this could be way worse and um yeah um and this is something i would like like i think i could probably this is something i talked to to a friend of mine i said to a friend of mine that i think i can talk to a particular kind of um oh i got a nice I got a really pleasant message back on oh, okay, Cupid, that I'm gonna reply to. Hey, that's like a good, a good feeling. <laughs> Some dopamine for the fucking <laughs> monkey brain. <laughs> um. So yeah, also like my insecurities, my insecurity, like it had of course a lot of factors played into that um that okay i didn't have any kind of like role model of how could that look like um now i have um like okay they, these aren't my role models but like okay hey i see certain ways of how you could do that and um that um no uh what is say I have gained more self-consciousness in that area, I think. Um, I'm, I'm just seeing like, okay, my pop filter, it's like having this big round pop filter is like kind of, I, I really want to try the, the other one. This like, this one that you just put up on the mic because the pop filter is like so much in your face. And yes, it looks more professional than the other one <laughs> because there's more like stuff around the fucking microphone. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that I could, I don't know if I can talk to normies. I don't know. And of course then, okay, with a lot of stuff that played into that, 
these were my friends. That was that that isn't something that I can say, okay, hey, if that goes wrong, I can still it, that isn't like lethal. Then that's okay. That it's like it isn't an in a professional sense. When I say, okay, hey, I fail to talk about to talk with these people to try to give them some kind of okay, hey, why or how could you channel these feelings or stuff? Um that's not something that you can just easily say, okay, yeah, hey, I failed at that person. Um it didn't work. Well, next one, please. Like you can't do that with friends. And that's also something like that, of course, like makes you hugely anxious about that. Um yeah. Fuck, man. Like, the thing is... The cool thing is that the... Um, the message I just got is... Um, is about, uh, okay, like, a little bit of... I could say flirting... Um, around... Like, reading somebody something... Like reading something out loud to somebody, like reading something out loud to somebody, is really fucking um, like feels really good. <laughs> oh, my brain is, I think my brain is fried for today. Oh god, another not so pleasant stream experience that was pretty fun until I just realized, okay, that's probably that's probably been like, um have been friends of mine and but the thing is okay I can't do anything about that yeah yeah Uh, the fuck that thing is also, I don't have any, any Xbox Game Pass anymore, so I can't just say okay, yeah, let's just, let's just play some Halo and get my mind cleaned. I really should consider buying Halo, like simply just buying Halo the Master Chief. Like I don't play Halo Five, just buying the Master Chief Collection, so I don't have to spend. Every month, my fucking game pass. Yeah, the one viewer, if Twitch view count doesn't fuck up again. I think I think I should have still one viewer. Thank you for being here. Um, I think I'm gonna end now. There's no reason to continue. Um, let's see who we can raid. Is is Angel Steps? We are. Yeah, Angel Steps. We are still online. Okay. Yeah. Let's just let's just raid her. Okay. Um, see ya. Thank you.